but I remember the preparation as much as anything and then the excitement in the air. You know, it was a big time game uh, and it was on ESPN at that time. It wasn't a lot of games on TV at night. So from that standpoint, I remember those things more than anything. I remember it was really physical and the crowd was just unbelievable that day. Coach Jones, I'm nothing against the guy, but you know, you always try to read clips before the week to motivate you. I just remember those guys and those and those coaches over there saying, you know, Mike's, you know, he's he's okay. He's not Thurman, he's not Barry. I just remember that. Coach was more into preparation during the week in practice, and he was the same all the time. He's always in a bad mood, and he was always on us as players to compete and play at a high level. And so I don't really know him being any different in that week than he would be any other week. But I had heard and I've seen highlights of him. Um, so that game, you know, I made a special point to actually watch OSU's offense so I could see this guy. And he was as good as advertised. Man, I, you know, up to that point, I was like, well, he can't be that special. But, but after that game, I was like, this guy is really nice. But as the season went on in 88, when he continued to roll up big numbers and score that many touchdowns, about halfway through, we realized that he was going to win the Heisman Trophy. We played against a defense that, if you go back then, there wasn't as much coverage as there is now, but their defense was uh, as good as there was in the country. They had several guys that played in the NFL that were playing on that defense. And, you know, he rushed for 220-something yards and made a lot of players miss in space. And I think that once the country saw him do that on ESPN, because there wasn't as much coverage then, I think that kind of settled it for everybody and realized that he is the best player in the country. Well, I remember when we first started out, man, we were just blowing by him. Everything was clicking first half. We were getting long, huge chunks of yards. And, and uh, second half, like the mojo turned, and Oklahoma State got it. And we start turning the ball over. We were getting three and outs and just couldn't move the ball, couldn't do anything. OSU took the lead in the fourth quarter. And I don't think we had really done anything in the second half. And then we had about six or seven minutes left to score. And I think we went on about a 70, 80 yard drive, ran a couple of options. I believe I fumbled on the last drive uh, on a screen pass, and then we, fortunately we recovered it. And I think the next play or two, that's when Charles you know, went around the left, end, left side on the option and scored. And well, the critical turning point was a personal foul they called on the sideline. I mean, that's not a call that you make in a game like that, unless it's something that's really vicious that deserves a, a flag, you don't make that call. And uh, obviously we're going to have fourth and one and we end up fourth and 16 and that's when the pass happened. But I don't think there's anybody that would tell you today in officiating or as a fan, that's not a call that's made. And you know, that's not something that's been kept a secret. That's just a fact. And it was dash right. And uh, we were trying to throw to Hart the ball that was going to go to Hartley Dykes. And then three of their defenders jumped on him and they turned Brent loose going right down the middle of the field. I mean, Brent's a very level-headed guy. and a very intelligent person. He understands that the team knows that he did everything he could. I mean, it's not like he tried to drop the pass. It's a very unfortunate situation for him, and um, he just dropped it. Sometimes that happens in athletics, but Brent's always been okay with that, and the people here at Oklahoma State have always accepted that. Well, I think any loss is always difficult to handle as a team. Um, when we had had as much success as we'd had in, you know, the last four or five years at Oklahoma State, you know, we'd won 10 and 9 and then 6 and then back to 10 and 10. Uh, those teams want to win every game.
something extra if I could do that. You had a lot extra for them. But going into that game, it's an early November game. You know, mm -hmm. now the game's played yeah. Thanksgiving, but it was an early November game in 88. How much aware were you of what Barry Sanders was doing at that point? Well, at that point, I had heard of, uh, but I really hadn't focused on him very much because I, I just came off my redshirt year, so it was really my first year actually playing, being an active part of the, of the program. But I had heard and I've seen highlights of him. Um, so that game, you know, I made a special point to actually watch OSU's offense so I could see this guy. And he was as good as advertised. Man, I, you know, up to that point, I was like, well, he can't be that special. But, but after that game, I was like, this guy is really nice. Well, and sort of taking that, uh, being able to watch the offense, at the end of the game, after you had this unbelievable mm -hmm. game with mm -hmm. all, you know, in some ways, a little bit of a coming out party for yeah, you, uh, yeah. from a, from a college football standpoint. But uh, you're a little helpless because there you yeah. are on the bench. What was that like? Well, that was tough because those guys, you know, Gundy and Sanders and Dykes. I mean, they've got the fire, the firepower, and they were just moving the ball. And then, you know, we all know that they had an opportunity to win that game, and a lot of people say they should have. Um, still to this day, I don't know if, if our guy actually tipped the ball. You don't. He says he did. He says he did, but I don't know if he did or if he did. I know he was beat, though. He let the guy get behind him, our free safety. So it was fortunate for OU that he, the guy didn't catch the ball. Uh, that was a sort of fits and starts offensively for OU. Didn't, there was a bunch of fumbles. Oh, yeah. And what do you remember sort of about OU's offensive struggles from that game? Well, I remember when we first started out, man, we were just blowing by him. Everything was clicking. First half, we were getting long, huge chunks of yards. And and uh, second half, like the mojo turned, and Oklahoma State got it. And we start turning the ball over. We're getting three and outs and just couldn't move the ball, couldn't do anything. And I remember OSU took the lead in the fourth quarter. And I don't think we had really done anything in the second half. And then we had about six or seven minutes left to score. And I think we went on about a 70, 80-yard drive. We ran a couple of options. I believe I fumbled on the last drive uh, on a screen pass. And then, we, fortunately, we recovered it. And I think the next play or two, that's when Charles, you know, went around the left, end, left side on the option and scored. And There's a great picture in our archives of you on a run down the left sideline with uh, running back coach Mike Jones watching it. And, but what play, is there any specific play? I mean, as we said, that's sort of a coming out party for mm -hmm. you. Any specific play that you remember about that game? From uh, well, I remember uh, I, I took a little trap play up the middle, right up, uh, I think it was the first quarter, maybe second drive or so. I took that right up the middle, about 50, 60 yards. And old Melvin uh, Gilliam, I think his last name was, I think he was trying to run me down. I had a high step on him. I think I remember that play. And then I, I remember, um, I remember I took a talk, uh, an option around the left side. Uh, that might be in the same quarter as well. But I didn't score that time. I just remember I, it was about a 50, 60 yard run, and one of OSU's guys just blasted me at the end of the run, and I was just dizzy, seeing stars, and uh, I remember laying on the ground, and then my my teammate, I think Leon Perry, came and picked me up, and I was still a little woozy. I really wasn't ready to get up yet. Then I stumbled back to the huddle, and I was all right after that. But, yeah, I remember it was really physical, and the crowd was just unbelievable that day. Now, the, the, the controversial play where uh, Garrett Lindbrick gets the pen, personal foul call, um, 15 yards, the referee uh, had warned, or the line, the line judge had warned him several mm -hmm. times, calm down. Mm -hmm. um, that's on the Sooner sideline where it happened. Were you anywhere near? No, I, I'd actually see that one. I actually missed that one play, that play, but I didn't actually see what happened on that one. But uh, that's the 15 yard uh, right before. Yeah, I remember that play. I remember that play because we they we took him back 15, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, that's right. I remember the play, but I didn't actually see what had happened. But probably fortunate for us. Yeah, well, yeah. that was a big play in the game that that uh -huh. put them into a really long yard mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. um, as you look back at your career, it's two. You, you get 213 yards that day. Mm -hmm. Barry Sanders gets 215. Mm -hmm. But the next year, and a lot of people remember you for the Bedlam '88 performance. Mm -hmm. But it's the next year that you got 274 on them, mm -hmm. and then 203. Mm -hmm. 
and so that's why every year at Bedlam time, people start yeah. asking to Mike Gaddis. Yeah. Are there any other specific memories you have about your? Why were you so successful against OSU? Well, I just rem I just remember, uh, you know, I, and Coach Jones, I have nothing against the guy, but you know, you always try to read clips before the week to motivate you. I just remember those guys and those and those coaches over there saying, you know, Mike's, you know, he's okay. he's okay. He's not Thurman. He's not Barry. I just remember that. And I was like, you know what? I got something for you guys. I'm going to show you. Because I remember those guys coming up to my high school, calling my mom, begging me to take a trip down. Just a recruiting trip. I remember that. You didn't that. go. You didn't I go. didn't even take a trip down there. I remember those times. And I, and I thought it was kind of funny that, you know, when I'm playing wearing the other color on the other side of the state, you know, they don't want to give me any respect, but you know, so I always felt like I had to show them a little something. Do you, um, as you look back at your career, I mean, you know, the, a devastating uh, knee injury, and you know, it looked like Heisman Trophy and all those things. Mm -hmm. this, you're looking back at the Bedlam game, it's sort of you gonna show your kids and say, "Now, <laughs> that, that, that's what that's what I'm talking about there." Uh, yeah, I think I will. Uh, I, I think I can get some film of those games because um, I, I got two young. I got a five-year-old and a one-year-old, and I know they don't know Daddy used to play. My oldest one's starting to realize that I used to play a little bit because his uncles were telling him, and you know everybody at his school tells him, or the teachers anyway, because they remember. But, uh, yeah, I, I think I may pull some, something out and show them when, I, when they get a little older. Do you um, – do you – Go to the games now, or yeah, will you be in? Will you be in Stillwater on a uh, week from Saturday? Well, I hadn't went in a while. You know, I had gotten sick, so I kind of had not been going to games. But I do plan on going again once my son gets a little older and he can enjoy it. Uh, Saturday nights and Saturdays in, in Norman, they're fun, but it, it could be a little hassle sometimes. You Especially know, when you got little ones. yeah, when you got little ones. So when when he's at the age where he can actually sit through a full game. Yeah, we're definitely going to be going back and forth. Now, you mentioned friends on the other sidelines, uh, and you, you know, William Woods went up there and played basketball. Yeah. Was there anybody on the football team that had any Carl Albert connections? In uh, no Carl Albert connection, but uh, Brandon uh, went to El Reno. I can't remember this guy's name. No, yeah, no man. You know what? I he remember. had some brothers. Yeah, that's right. I remember that guy. He went to El Reno. We uh, we took a we took a recruiting trip together. Well, we went to Norman together. And Brandon had told me that he was going to commit to Norman, I mean, to OU that day. And he ended up going to Stillwater. So it was always fun to see him um, at that game. You know, he played, you know, nose tackle. So we, we met a lot. And plus, we played together against each other in high school because he went to El Reno and I went to Carl Albert. So we saw each other a lot. Now, Mike, do, as far as your, you know, your best highlights or the things you most remember, where do the Bedlam games rank? I mean, is uh, it personal? Favorite games in the Sooner uniform? Where are My favorite games? games, I think they're right up there. They're, they're near the top. I, I believe the, the OU Texas game was always special. Um, and that sticks out in my mind because there was good and bad times for me personally in that game. And, you know, Bedlam, Nebraska, the bowl games. But Bedlam's right up there near the top. Um, that 213, uh, you get, you're, you're matching the Heisman Trophy winner. Um, and you talked, as you talked about, uh, 